the New York State Athletic Commission, alongside VADA, and even the big dogs themselves, the World Boxing Council, they've been some pretty busy boys and girls during December. They have been putting out fires, damage control, deflecting attention, as well as a number of reports and updates to their groundbreaking drug testing program. Even Mauricio Suleiman Jr., the WBC president, has had to step off his gold throne and intervene on a number of issues. So without further ado, let's explore what all of these illuminaries have been up to. Now, during um, the early part of December, the WBC um, disseminated an update to a report issued by the Clean Boxing Programme. Now, we all know that the WBC have, that is their initiative, they fund the program, and the Clean Boxing Program is a, is a random drug testing program overseen by VADA. Now, the Clean Boxing Program issued a testing pool from the 1st of October to the 20th November. Now those are the testing parameters for a number of athletes. Now within that testing pool there were 28 tests attempted by VADA within, we know, the, the clean boxing program protocol. 22 of which were completed successfully. Now there were six missed tests and one positive A sample. Now the positive A sample was yielded by Kevin Larana. Um, now this was for a substance, clempophene. The sample, the A sample, uh, was collected by VADA uh, on the 18th of October in South Africa. Now the WBC have also disclosed further details regarding the missed tests. Um, now the six athletes in question uh, were Paddy Barnes, a flyweight from Northern Ireland who was due to fight on December the 22nd on the BOP on the ABT Sports pay-per-view card headlining headlined by Josh Warrington and Carl Frampton. We also had Ludumo Lamati, who's um, a bantamweight boxer from South Africa. Um, Jamal Charlo and Jamel Charlo. Yes, both Charlo twins. Um, I had no idea that uh, their umbilical cords were still intact. So where one twin goes, the other goes. If one fights, the other fights. If one misses a test, well, it's only appropriate that the other misses a test as well. And we also had um, Juan Jose Velasco, a super lightweight from Argentina, who was scheduled to fight on December the 15th. Um, you may recall Velasco, he fought Regis Progre um, a few months ago. I think that fight was in New Orleans. And the last person was Patrick Teixeira, the Brazilian middleweight promoted by Golden Boy, who was trying to rebound after a, a defeat. Um, so. So the WBC, um, just during the last week, um, 
they also published um, an update to receiving clean test results of Tony Harrison, who incidentally is fighting um, Jamel Charlo, who is one of those six athletes to have missed the test. But Tony Harrison's results came back with no adverse findings. Uh, also, Alexander Vodzik, the recently cracked WBC 170-pound light heavyweight champion, after a fantastic win over in Canada against longtime champion Adonis Stevenson. And um, best wishes to Adonis Stevenson for a for a full and speedy recovery. The clean test results were also yielded by Spaniard bantamweight Kiko Martinez, Paddy Barnes, which is interesting. Um, he was what he was also one of the six athletes to have missed the test, but clearly Paddy Barnes uh, had re-established contact with the WBC's clean boxing program. Vara must have um, travelled to Northern Ireland, presumably, um, and subsequently taken a test, urine test. Results were analysed and um, Paddy Barnes um, is given the green light to proceed on the card, which is good to see. We also had John Ryder. The British super middleweight promoted by Eddie Hearn. And we also had the post fight uh, testing on Miguel Burchelt and Miguel Roman. That fight was for the uh, WBC 130 pound super featherweight championship. Fantastic fight of which Miguel Burchelt defended his belt. But interesting, we've got no, we've got no clean test results of Jamal and Jamel Charlo. You know, out of the six athletes, you know they're incumbent champions. You know, WBC interim champion at 160 pounds, being Jamal Charlo and Jamel Charlo, the 154 pound super welterweight WBC champion. Both of which are fighting on the PBC's big, big card this Saturday on Fox Sports. Um, so, hmm, interesting. Now, the WBC also received confirmation by Vara that. Willie Monroe Jr. tested with an adverse finding. Now all parties, um, of course, were informed. You know, Premier Boxing Champions, TGB Promotions, and the broadcaster Fox Sports. And all three parties were unanimous of making, you know, the best of. The best of the situation, you know, to preserve, you know, the safety of all fighters. Now, the supervisory authorities generally make the rules on the fighter. Um, you know, the New York State Athletic Commission. Um, you know, pulled a plug on Willie Monroe Jr., presumably revoking his license. Now, that's interesting because the WBC had initially indicated that they wanted, you know, further time to investigate the A sample. And certainly in this situation, you know, the B sample would also be tested. Um, so the uh, you know the lack of information is you know of great concern. Now at this point, 
what do we know about the facts of this um, of this test? You know, I had to dig deep. Now, the WBC indicated uh, a sample collected from Willie Monroe yielded an adverse finding for a banned steroidal substance. Now, what the hell does that mean? You know, that is highly ambiguous. They've not disclosed what the substance is and the amount that was contained in his urine sample. But what really um, surprised me was that, that the WBC also advised that Mr. Monroe disclosed to the, um, to the sample collector you know, his use of a non-specific testosterone booster in his doping control form. Um, Mr. Monroe did not request, nor did he receive, a therapeutic use exemption for any substance. Now, my re immediate reaction to that is, get the fuck out of here. You know, Willie Monroe has worked with Victor Conte in the past, and he certainly did for the Billy Joe Saunders fight. And he may have been working with Victor Conte in this test, in his, um, in this specific camp leading up to his um, proposed bout with Jamal Charlo before the WBC have obviously pulled the plug. Now, Victor Conte certainly knows the ins and outs of drug testing. Supplements, protocols, how to submit doping control forms, applications for therapeutic use exemptions. He's very well versed in all of this. As he's overseen this duty for athletes going back 20 years plus. So, Willie Monroe would would be utilizing a bad substance without getting some sort of a retrospective waiver from his physicians but at the same time he would be disclosing that on his doping control form surely he must have known that that wouldn't extricate him he wouldn't be exonerated from any any such violation. Um, everybody knows that. You're not going to get away by just simply disclosing that you've been taking a banned substance on your doping control form without explanation. You know, you've got to have medical certification. And he clearly doesn't have any of that. Um, so I find that very hard to believe. It, it To me, it sounds like Willie Monroe has taken the bullet for the team and that is this inaugural PBC promotion which is taking place on Fox Sports as part of this one of boxing's biggest deals in history some two billion dollar number of year um, it sounds like um That this finding is deflecting the heat that was being generated by the WBC regarding, you know, the failed, the missed, excuse me, the missed tests of Jamal and Jamel Charlo, and specifically the WBC not indicating when they were previously tested and whether the Charlos had re-established contact with Vada. And subsequently provided urine samples. You know, that particular... The time frame is highly critical. As previous videos that I've... Uploaded on this channel indicate that... 
substances can exit the body from as little as, you know, seven hours to around 72 hours for some of the most sophisticating layering that athletes do when they're not only burning fat to try and make weight, but at the same time retaining strength and building muscle mass. So when they're taking cocktails of substances, you know, peptides and anabolic steroids, you know, that's generally sort of layered by chemists such as Victor Conte under their sort of supervision as to when to cycle off. So that time frame is cricket critical. So if they've if both Charlos have missed the test and they subsequently provided samples say two or three days later then then there's a high probability that their samples would not have yielded any adverse finding um, so the WBC um, you know came under, came under fire from that you know a number of journalists were posing those questions um, They've not, they've not released any such updates to their earlier reports about clean test results, you know, under a pool done from, you know, the 15th of December onwards. Um, and furthermore, both Charlos and even Patrick Tuxero, etc., they've, they've not received any such punitive suspensions etc the charlos have just received a a financial penalty from the sanctioning organizations now this really does um, question the validity and the authenticity of the uh, clean boxing program because a, a missed test is just as good as a failed test as far as I'm concerned, if that athlete has not been immediately tested. But I, I shall wait, you know, I mean, I'll wait for... I'll wait for a report, you know, that the WBC or the Clean Boxing Programme will issue, probably in early January, I presume. No doubt they'll have the retrospective results of the Charlos. Um... But if Paddy Barnes, you know, was immediately tested and his test results disclosed, then um, it's of, uh, you know, grave concern that, that the Charlos and Patrick Shikshera, etc., and even Juan Velasco's results have not been disclosed. Um, you know, it's important, yeah, it is important to make the distinction that we're not talking about fail tests at the moment. We're just talking about missed tests and no retesting undertaken. Now, Tony Harrison will certainly feel aggrieved. You know, he has he's produced a clean sample, um, so that the green light for that championship fight is still going ahead. Um, But Willie Wanro, unfortunately, you know, they pulled the plug on him and Matt Korobov has stepped in. And uh, Matt Korobov, who was due to fight on the card at 168 pounds, people, um, you know, he's been forced or he's been compelled to, you know, shed a further eight pounds. He was due to fight on the untelevised portion of the, of the Fox card. So he's been offered a you know, much, an additional X amount of money and, um, you know, he has an opportunity now to fight for the um, 160, 160-pound WBC interim championship. Um, you know, that that's... That pretty much makes a mockery of that particular contest. You know, Willie Monroe, you know, if makes every fighter look bad. You know, he has a horrible style. And if if Willie Monroe was standing next to Anna Beatrice Barros, 
a Brazilian lingerie model, he would probably make her look bad as well. So that fight, um, he's not going to go ahead. Matt Korobov stepping in. Now he's had a better fight. You know, Korobov, a 35-year-old decorated amateur. You know, 300 fight, 300 wins, 12 defeats. A brilliant amateur who defeated even Alexander Rusik in the 2006 European Championships. Um, he's stepping in. But he's been fighting at 160, at 175 pounds. Now he's, at his own volition, he's coming down to 160 pounds. You know, a veteran. His last three fights have been on points. You know. He looks to be well over the hill. Um, I don't think he has the power. Um, He's weight drawn, you know. He's clearly fighting at a... At a weight category that he has not been fighting in in the last sort of four fights, um, so I don't I don't expect Matt Korobov to give Jamal Mark Charlo much resistance. It's a slick fighter, very good. He has a good one win over Jose Uscata guy, the 168 pound uh, IBF champion. I think he dropped Jose twice in that fight as well. But it was a unanimous points decision. I think it was a 10 round fight four years ago or something. Um, you know, other fighters could have stepped in. You know, Toriana Johnson was, you know, his fight against David Lemil fell through. You know, why isn't Jamal Chile firing, fighting a credible, you know, battle hardened 160 pound fighter? Why does Matt Korobov have to? lose eight pounds five days before the fight um, you know he certainly he, he wants a payday so you know I'm not no blame is attached to Matt Korobov but um, you know it's uh, you know I think it just It just makes a mockery of the entire Fox car taking place. Certainly the co-main event and the main event. You know, red flags against both Charlos. You know, Matt Korobov losing eight pounds coming down, you know. But what do I know? You know, that was just my thoughts. Uh, corruption in boxing. Sayonara.